Okay guys, seriously, 800,000 subscribers, people are expecting high production value. Okay, we have to get this right. Harrison, start pedaling. Good. More, 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 come on, let's go. Yes, okay, and fan and fog. Perfect, okay, Karsten, seriously buddy, get this right this time, okay? Lights, okay, lean in, lean, lean, yes, lean, yes. Lean, James, ready? This is hinging on you. This all comes down to you, okay? It's not a big deal, but you can do this. I know you can do this. Ready and go. This just might work. Over five decades of tweaking means that Porsche is getting really good at making 911s. The shape is unmistakable. The performance is undeniable. And now in the 992 generation, modern technology takes an old formula to the next level. Since this is the Carrera S, it gets 443 horsepower and 390 pound-feet of torque from a 3-liter twin-turbo flat 6. And before I show you just how potent that power plant is and how incredible this car is at speed, I want to show you, well, how slow it can be. And if you're new to Throttle House, we do car reviews, track tests, and quite a lot of messing about. So subscribe and hit the bell. You're watching Throttle House. I'm Thomas. And I'm supposed to be meeting James on our usual back roads, but I decided to take a detour through a city. Because even though this is the 911 Carrera S, and it's really, really fast, as I'll show you in a minute, and it has a manual transmission, right now, it's just a normal car. It's so supple. The ride is beautiful. The car is comfortable and quiet. The visibility is great. I have all the interior room in the world. And the stereo is fantastic, even though this is just the Bose one and not the upgraded Burmester. The point that I'm trying to make is that this car is a beautiful vehicle to drive every single day. But none of that matters if when you leave the city and turn onto a back road like this, doesn't come alive like a hundred and fifty thousand dollar sports car should. Or for a hundred thousand dollars less, you can have one of these, a 997.2 Carrera S. Oh, and I'm James. Jump back 10 years and you get a 911 that left the turbos to the turbo. This 2010 Carrera S delivers 385 horsepower and 310 pound-feet of torque from its 3.8 litre flat 6, which was redeveloped with direct fuel injection for this generation. And now that it's been around for a while, it's less than half of the new one's price. And yet, it's still a pure, uninhibited, naturally aspirated icon. And it sounds like one too. Keep it, keep it, keep it, yes! That's a 911. 3.8 litre flat six, naturally aspirated, 385 horsepower, and quite a bit less torque than that number because no turbos. And for the uninitiated, that might sound like a bad thing, but it is not. So yes, the new 992 is stiffer, it's wider, it's faster. And this is the S, so it's got even more. But it is turbocharged. This is not the first time that a turbocharged 911 has been turbocharged without being called a turbo. That was the 991.2 generation, which was turbocharged without being called a turbo. This is the Carrera S, which gets 443 horsepower. That's 64 more than the non-S turbocharged non-turbo 911 Carrera, and 58 more than the 911 that James is in. Confused? So am I. So the turbochargers mean, <laughs> 
cut that it has a lot more torque. But Porsche being Porsche didn't settle for a typical turbocharged power band where it just kind of flattens out and dies off near the red line. No, they tuned this with two turbos so that it pulls right to the red line. But the big issue that I have, and one of the only issues that I have with this car, is that two things. One, in Carrera S trim, it's too fast. This car has too much power. And when you have all of that boost and these sound symposers that kind of pump some induction noise in in Sport Plus, it just kind of becomes a boomy, whooshy, turbocharged experience. It makes this noise doesn't come through on camera as much. It sounds more flat six there, but for me, it just kind of sounds like And since it's so powerful, even though the gears are really tall, oh my God, the whole thing happens so quickly. So I don't get to enjoy that flat six sound. It's like if you played Beethoven's Ninth Symphony in one second, it would just be Does it feel quick? Not to 60 and a hair over five seconds. It's not slow. And it's just exciting. You get to live in that gear for a while, which some might say is a bad thing because at the top of second gear, you're well over the speed limit. But I just, I just want to nestle in there. It's wonderful. And we've got hydraulic steering, not the electric, super refined stuff in Thomas's. So I have more of a connection with the road. Not as much as I was expecting, to be honest, but more than modern cars. But it wouldn't be a 911 if it didn't handle like a Porsche. And oh, it does. the 911, they've made it handle a little bit less like a rear-engined car. The weight distribution in this car doesn't feel that strange like a 911 should. When I turn in, I still kind of get that lean in of the rear end of the engine, but it's not super obvious. It just feels like a tight sports car. And the steering is incredibly accurate. This. It is some of the best electric power steering in the world right now. But it has to be said that an old Porsche has better steering. It cannot be escaped. At 60 grand, it's not cheap. Oh, that's a sports car. That's a sports car. There is a reason the 911 is an icon. It is, and this almost sounds like I'm putting it down here, but I'm not. It is the Golf GTI of the six-figure sports car in the best way possible. And I can't wait to see if the 992 has kept that. Because damn, it looks good. But the biggest thing, the biggest news of the day is that I'm in an interior that looks like this. It's beautiful in a modern sports car that costs over $100,000. And I have a manual transmission, which by the way, is brilliant. Incredibly positive gears, well gated, the clutch is a bit springy, but it's intuitive enough. And the position that my hands are in relative to the shifter is textbook. I can touch both the steering wheel and the shifter at the same time. My hand barely moves, bang a gear, bang a gear. And that is just lended to by what is one of the best driving positions in any car I have ever been in ever. I, this is the first time in the world that I've got in a sports car and was unable to have the seat in the lowest possible position because it's too low. James talks about drug dealer low driving positions. This one's the full Pablo Escobar. Name another car where you just get to have your cake and eat it like this one. It's got two back seats for small people. It's fast, it's fun, it looks great. So the 997 delivers naturally aspirated, rear-engined, flat six sounding thrills. And even though it delivers on all of those things, the 997 generation is still not immune from the 911 midnight in Paris syndrome. That is, every generation that came before it must be better. So just out of curiosity, 
Let's go back to 1996, where you could have rolled off the lot in a beautiful Arena Red 993. And before I even start the engine, listen to the sound of the door closing. Better put my seatbelt on, because in place of safety, we have visibility with these tiny A-pillars. And if I want to start the engine, I've got to press this button just before. Do it. It's going to do it a different way now. I'm just going to press it a different, get a different vibe. There we go. First time. <laughs> All right. So we have a floor mounted clutch pedal, which feels very strange. Air cooled 911, stuff of legend. And you're probably thinking, that's an old 911, and you see it drive by, and it's probably quite scary. Well, guess what? 1996 wasn't that long ago. And this doesn't drive that old. The shifter is easy to manage. The clutch, despite being floor mounted and strange, isn't punishing. Like the 997, it's not electric steering. And it feels another stage of analog. Now, I'm not going to tell you that 282 horsepower is a lot of power, but when you're pushing something that's this light and this small, you don't find yourself wanting for much more. It has that sound. There's so much feel in the steering. I'm not just driving this car. It's a part of the journey with me. The steering wheel is talking to me. I can feel that. Oh, hello. I feel it. While I'm hard on a car like this because I want it to feel like a classic 911, I can't really fault it that much. It is an utterly brilliant, unbelievable car. It is technically perfect. It's wondrously fast. It's just an unbelievable car with a manual transmission. Because it's so analog, it's far more fun in the turns, even at 40 kilometers an hour. I think it's just that feeling of fear that doesn't exist in the new ones. I'm waiting for that engine to spin around the car and bite me, but it hasn't yet. Let's see what it's like after four or five thousand. Six. Oh, that's not something you get with turbos on it. That is pure, smooth, flat six. Courtesy of 1996. And I think it's fair to say that the design has aged quite well. I'm going to go talk to Thomas about that now. Ah, 9-11 day. It's a good day. We actually haven't done very many 9-11s. They've been very absent from the throttle house. No, and that's it now. That's Porsche done. Yeah, except for next week. Except for next week. Yeah, maybe the and week may after. Yeah, maybe the week after. Yeah. yeah, stay tuned for that. Yeah. All right, I don't care what you think of this in terms of looks because oh, I think thanks. it looks fantastic. Okay. Unbelievable. And I think even the $9,000 cheeky option that makes it look like a GT3. And changes the front bumper. Yep. Is absolutely fine. I would go to sleep like a baby, knowing that I have something that looks slightly like a different spec. Want to know what I think? What do you think? I think it's absolutely beautiful. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was worried about you. Were you worried because about Because people will kill you. Wouldn't they? Will they? Yeah, it's this scary. is an icon. It's, well, speaking of icons, I'm sorry. Like, Oh, you like that? I do like that yeah. very much. Oh, yes. I thought you liked that. I'll yeah. bring that along. <laughs> you can crazy. see that this has paid homage to it. It's got, the, it's got these strokes down the bonnet. Oh, this doesn't have them. That's right. Okay. And yes. even more geekily. Geek geekily? Geekily, that's a word. Only geeks know. <laughs> um, you wouldn't know. Okay. This, in order to be more similar to the 993, has the headlights in the fender. Whereas the 997 and the 991 has the headlights in the fender and the, the bumper, and it doesn't look as good. This is, this is more historical. If more you historic. Had, if you hadn't pointed that out to me, I would never have noticed that. I know. Ever. The more yeah. you know. Okay. We're a bastion of useless information. <laughs> The 993, I, you know what I think about this. You know where I stand. This is, for me, the coolest thing. That's because you're an old man. You're 32 going on 60. And a little bit, yeah. You love backgammon, and your favorite thing about cruise ships is the shuffleboard on the top. Yeah. And your favorite suite is Werther's Original. That's everyone's secret favorite suite, though, because they're so good. <laughs> yeah, they're so delicious. They're so delicious. They're so good, yeah. No, this is absolutely stunning, and Arena Red doesn't hurt it either. Yeah, it's, oh, it's amazing. All right, the middling Porsche 997. Yes. Middle between these ish. Ish, there's another one. That's not and, far. Yeah, there's one, 14 one. years. There's 10 a bastard years. child in here somewhere. We're going to talk about the runny egg. We're going to talk about runny <laughs> no egg. No runny egg is. I like my eggs hard boiled, thank you very much. Uh, uh, I actually have no problem with the 996, but that's the story. It's for a great time. car. It just doesn't look nearly as good as these. I think next to the 992, this now looks dated. It still no, looks all no, 911. No, 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 no. This 
looks new. This looks like a, okay, to be fair, when this came out, I thought it was too angular. But now it just looks kind of like a 911 to me. I've adapted to it, and this looks more rounded. That doesn't bother me. I like the rounded 911. I can't take my eyes off it. It's beautiful. Yeah, it is. It's better. Well, it's, it's better. better. Don't we? It's better. It's better. Oh. Oh, it's so wonderful to see it is a manual good. gearbox. Oh yeah, that's right. Was with it. such a high-tech interior. This interior is absolutely per no. See, perfect in implies that it's perfect. It's not perfect. There are a couple things. I have first. I'm going to do the two gripes that I have with this. Okay. And then you can just assume the rest is perfect. Okay. First of all, beautiful gauge cluster, right? Lovely. Have digital analog. I can see it all, all from the here. information. Yeah, that's because these two gauges are I think for you, not for me. Because no matter where I put the steering wheel, I only get one, two, three gauges. I don't get these at all. Because of the thumb rest? Because of the thumb rest. They're right in the way. It's completely useless. I don't know what they were thinking. Um, but the other issue is, is a very minor one, also maybe potentially a very serious one. They don't know what it is. I've corroborated this with other people who have tested the 992, and there are rattles in the interior of this car. Oh. Like little rat, like not creaks. There's rattles. Like it's like there's a piece of plastic stuck in a little area. Like when That's you, a shame. It's really weird. Other than, I, I'm just gonna, maybe these are early cars, I don't know, I'm gonna give it a benefit of the doubt because otherwise, I love I love this, this interior. interior. When it yes. came out, it came out in just the PDK. Yes. And it was that little nub. And, and I didn't have a problem out. with everyone that. Everyone freaked out yeah. about that, I don't bother me that much. But I think if you want the PDK and not the manual, you have to at least be able to pronounce the words that PDK stand for in German. <laughs> what is it? So, obviously me as a resident German, yeah, huh? <laughs> okay, go ahead. Um, it is Doppelgefühl uh, Getriebe. <laughs> German's watching this, tell me. I tried to keep a straight face, you said it's, that. Doppelgefühl ge Getriebe, <laughs> which is the PDK. Okay, good to know. This has a drive mode selector, which is part of the Sport Chrono package. So I get this little thing down here, like a. And the clock. You can hear the exhaust change immediately, right? Now, this has cooled seats. Cooled seats lately have been an issue for us in many cars because they don't ever actually work. These yeah. really do. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. All of a sudden, it makes a lot of noise. When you're on the road, you can't hear it, but like they really do work. We'll turn those off so that people can hear us. Either way, even with the sunroof, there's still a ton of headroom. I, I love the driving position. I love the interior quality. I love the steering wheel. And we have a haptic feedback on a piano black panel, which does show fingerprints very badly. But other than that, it's simple. I love this interior. Let's go see what the uh, 2010 one looks like. Okay. All right, we've rewound a decade. And now oh, look we at the Alcantara roof. <laughs> you just called me a child for playing with stuff in the other car. I did, yeah, okay. So, this is the 997.2, which doesn't sound like much, but it was a huge difference, and one of the biggest changes was the interior. Yeah. So, for me, this new steering wheel is a lot better. We had this giant triangle. Oh, beforehand. the triangle one. Yeah, that was no good. Now it looks really dated. No, but this is nice. I can see all my gauges in here. What a novel yeah. idea. This seems old. We have a SIM slot now. Wow. Yes. Yeah. Um, but you know, if this had CarPlay in it, it would maybe modernize it, but just getting out of that 992. The buttons all have a nice click to them, though. Like everything feels still high Porsche quality, except for. Well, this is all plastic down here, and yeah. Yeah, but the seats are comfortable. They are very comfortable. A little bit stiff. Yeah. Little bit yeah. stiff. Remember, we're going back. That's a headroom still, too. Yeah, we're going back two generations. Yes. So this isn't just like the previous generation interior. This is two back. Yeah. No, or two, it's or still, three back technically. Yeah, the, it's still very nice. It's still very nice. I really like it. Yeah, but it, it you know interestingly the car is smaller, but the cabin doesn't feel that much smaller. No, that's true. Right? That's true. It is still bulbous, still 911y. I do like the gauges though. I mean, I like the digital. I, what I love is that they didn't. Okay, I'm gonna flame BMW right now because Porsche. Broken record, mate. It's yeah. Broken record. <laughs> I'm sorry, but Porsche did new digital gauges and they made them look like Porsche gauges and made them look like gauges, period. BMW just like, I don't know, you know I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna no bring it up again. No one brought up BMW. I'm sorry, I just, I'm upset. I'm upset about their gauge clusters. Really you know what will make you feel better? What? If you drive this. Can I drive it? Yeah. Okay. All right, in the 997. Oh, yes! <laughs> All the gear shift is good. Everything about it is good. And the steering is better. Oh, turn it in. Oh, I can, the front end just talks. Oh, my goodness. I have more of a sense of that engine being behind me, too. It feels more 911 y. Oh, <laughs> 
Oh man, I've driven a GT3, like the most recent GT3, and obviously 9,000 RPM, that sounds crazy. This only revs to like 7,300, but it has that flat sixness that I really feel like I was missing from the new 992. Here's the thing though, is that this is definitely more unrefined. As a daily vehicle, that 992 has it absolutely beat. Wow, turbos are good at making 50 something horsepower feel huge. And again, they've added that extra layer of refinement that keeps happening with each generation. From the 993 to the 996 to the 997 we just tried. This takes it that extra level. Now, yes, it does lack in sound and that's the turbos and you can't get away from that. But it's just so easy to drive. Such an easy manual to get on with, not intimidating at all. But here's the best part and the most exciting part. Porsche, yes, I said Porsche, even though I normally say Porsche, give you everything. There is a full menu to choose from, and this doesn't even sit that far in price from the crazy GT3. If you want naturally aspirated, PDK or manual, don't make me pick one. Please don't make me pick one. Because it's gonna be this. And I'll deal with the sound, it's absolutely fine. I think it's, I think it's just not what people are used to. But so much respect for the 997 and that gorgeous 993. I want them all. And I want them now, and that's okay. It's okay that I can't have them. Just give me another few minutes in this. All right, conclusions of the day. I want to give huge props to the 992 for being an absolutely brilliant 911. It is objectively incredible, and it still retains the 911-ness that I love about a car like this. It's important to know that the reason to me right now this car feels more visceral and, and more sports car is not because Porsche engineered it that way intentionally. They still tried when this car came out to make it the most refined sports car they could, which is what they did with the 992 very successfully. So this is less a product of Porsche making a more exciting car back then and, and just more a product of the times because that's where the technology could go to. So my choice today is the 997 because to me it just feels a bit more Porsche.